Alrighty, back again for episode three of this little mini-series, The Various Types of Anomalies on Earth's Surface. Today we're talking about strange patterns, and before I even talk about examples like this and this, I actually want to read you a quote and show you some architecture just to outline some talking points. So this is the Sacro Bosco, or Parco dei Mostri, in Italy. Uh, Park of the Monsters, basically. It's got a bunch of uh, strange monster figures, statues. And um, it's, uh, it's not Latin, it's Italian. There's an inscription at the park entrance on this thing. And this is Sylvie Ivanova's translation. I'll show you mine. Um, but uh, here it is. O Traveler. Tell me if all that you are about to see is merely art, or was it made to bewilder you? And I've read you that before. Uh, I thought it was important enough to try and verify that, just to make sure it says what I heard that it says. So this is, I couldn't really make it happen, but this is as good as I got. You go there as it is some wise part, then tell me if many... not sure what are made for deception or purely for art. I think P-U-R or P-V-R is pure, purely, probably. Probably not Persis. Um, so you go there as if it is wise or some wise thing, uh, but tell me if the many things you see are made for deception or purely for art. And I th it's more or less the same as, as this right here. So. The idea is uh, some of the strange patterns we see on from Google Earth uh, from above are those part of a part of a be bewilderment protocol or a deception protocol um, using um, slightly nonsensical patterns as a way to mess with the head of the beholder. Here's the other side of that, or possibly another similar statue. Um, who with bowed eyelashes and narrow lips does not go to this place, not even to admire the world-famous seven-something. Um, it's either Italian or I think Corsican is a dialect of Italian, maybe. I don't know. But uh, if you can come up with a better translation, here it is. Uh, but I th Oops, sorry about that. I think it's saying, uh, he who is wise does not go to this place even to admire the wonders. Uh, I think it's the gist of it. Um, so I think the idea is that the all of the wonders are a kind of um, gravitational magnet, or just a magnet for your attention. And uh, it's kind of like a, a, de uh, a tractor beam that pulls you into this uh, um, this he uh, headspace of being distracted or, I don't know, chasing, chasing dead ends or chasing your tail or something like that. Um, like it's, it's like an operation to pull you off path in some sense, maybe. Just the, the wonderment is uh, a way to bewilder, possibly. And who knows, maybe it's just this artist's um, uh, story sense, or I mean, um, taste in art. They, they like to be melodramatic or whatever. I, I tend to think stuff like this is more of a truth drop especially with some of the other stuff we see at this site. Um, we've got the kind of sphinx. She's got dog boobs, female boobs, like this kind of hybrid critter. Um, and then this park is full of derpy uh, works of art like this and this. Kind of like, again, the uh, smashing multiple different things together into one kind of chimera aesthetic. And then we've got these, um, I guess you would call this a necropolis or something. And there's all kinds of stoneworks or um, grooves in the 
grooves and divots and uh, uh, chunks in the stonework that are, to my eyes, slightly nonsensical or at least uh, look deceptive. Like these tracks resembling the vehicle tracks just across the corner of this rock. And I think that's all strategic. Got this lookout point with a little notch there and kind of like, it's kind of like a bench. Um, and this lone rock with uh, some uh, chunks taken out of it. Um, this, this boulder in particular, Sylvie mentioned that uh, no matter how you look at it, uh, no matter from which orientation, uh, the features on it don't line up with one another because the whole rock is kind of um, populated with these various features and the features themselves are not uh, coherently aligned relative to each other. So either something meaningful was warped or um, uh, it's meant to not make sense, uh, similar to the patterns I'm, I'll be showing you in Google Earth. Um, and then here's same park still, um, Sacro Bosco. And I want to point out here this stripe, this arbitrarily placed stripe of secondary building style. And get another look at it here and a closer look here. And I'm just saying it, it just kind of interrupts this. Well, um, it interrupts what's already going on in the rock for what I would consider to be no apparent reason. And you could say it's um, a reconstruction, like it was broken. But uh, what are the odds it was broken on such a perfect straight line, number one? And uh, number two, just, it just I just get a weird vibe. And also the, the goofy tool marks and I don't know. It strikes me as a, a BS um, work of art or deliberately uh, wacky. So then th we're leaving that park. Now we're in China. This is the Yangshan Quarry. And you can kind of see how this uh, protocol or, um, I don't know, agenda uh, extends and blends into, uh, from art and architecture into the earthworks. So we've got this big um, kind of island of rock here seemingly cut out on this insane scale. And here's another insane, insanely deep and wide uh, groove in the rock, uh, allegedly a quarry, but I don't know about that. We've got these knobs and uh, these chambers underneath here. And the knobs I think are kind of like a signature or um, a calling card. Uh, like to, to kind of let you know that this is the work of whoever did the other knobs, possibly. And I mean, copycatting is possible. And uh, I mean, but these look like part of the original structure. So uh, either this was a legit quarry and someone came along and made it l less legit looking, or I think uh, probably somebody's just making this whole site as, as a goof. Uh, a spoof, um, possibly as just kind of like a prank or an experiment um, levied against Earth or with Earth, depending how you look at it. Could be to our benefit in the long run or something like that. Um, but yeah, I'm saying stuff like this is more or less a, a plumbus. If you've seen my previous videos, uh, obviously the knobs you've probably seen on the walls in different sites. Again, uh, Egyptian pyramids, Peruvian walls, and of course this site in China. And um, very blatant and non-functional. I would say very obviously non-functional. And then we've got these weird uh, secondary details like these uh, this flattened uh, inset or re recessed shape in the rock here, uh, spanning multiple blocks, just like a, a recessed tongue here. And uh, to me, it's it doesn't seem like it served a purpose. So I think it's just a flare 
or gibberish or em embellishment uh, with a bewilderment um, agenda behind it, uh, possibly designed to, to pull your focus in and get you studying this instead of, I don't know, whatever else you should be doing. This is Japan. This rock, I would argue, is kind of a nonsense thing. Uh, I, I didn't put pictures of all the different sides of it, but you've got these weird markings on it. Uh, here's another site in Japan. Possibly functional, but... Sorry, struggling with my mouse here. Uh, then there's like these kind of gratuitous uh, rectangles. I'm not going to talk too much about the rectangular holes or square holes, but that's a huge, huge talking point that I'll hit on in the future because uh, that's one more thing you see on all these archaeological sites, whether it's Roman or Greek or older or newer, you see these rectangular or, or uh, square holes. It's not quite square, but um, kind of goofy, goofy holes taken out of, just like chunks taken out of the stone for no apparent reason. In some cases, they're meant to be uh, a hole to mount some kind of uh, dressing for the wall or uh, some kind of, I don't know, facade for the wall. But in most cases, I would argue that they're not, and they're just um, one little strategy of the bewilderment aspect. Here's a, in Japan, still, uh, this, I think it's called tofu rock, um, conventionally, or colloquially, and it's kind of sliced, or it looks like it's sliced like a loaf of bread. Could be natural, I suppose, but, uh... I'm going to say probably not, and I think it's yet again an, another deliberate enigma. Here's a few side by, side by side in Japan. We'll see this one in a second. Uh, I think it's called a passage grave. Um, here's another rock cut cliffside, and these grooves, I'm arguing, are not necessarily just a byproduct of construction method, uh, but they are deliberately imposed as part of, uh, see this derpy guy right here, and also the, you can kind of see some of the little squares, just little, little rectangular squares taken out of the, <clears throat> the site, uh, out of the stone, and so the, I think these lines are kind of analogous to the, the lines we see on the surface of Earth, they're just kind of gibberishy embellishment. So here's a passage grave, whatever that is, and it's got just these kind of meandering, um, nearly, uh, nearly sensical um, dots and dashes. Like they look like they could be something, you know what I mean? And then just the triangle things on the edge for for show or whatever. But. I, I would say I, I would say nothing burger, and much like the the Google Earth patterns, once again a a nothing burger chamber. Just it's it's nothing. Um, and then Yonaguni, also in Japan, uh, you've probably heard of this site underwater. With um, there's this big debate ongoing over whether it's natural or man-made, and I would say it's deliberately somewhere in between. So that, that is to say it's artificial, but it's strategically made to look, um, to look to have aspects of both, not too much of either. And uh, this tablet found near the site and perhaps carried by strong uh, currents it is pure speculation on what these symbols represent. So this tablet was found near the Yonaguni site, and I'm just saying that this is more evidence that we're dealing with um, a, uh, a zany, wacky um, algorithm that kind of spits out interesting stuff that isn't quite anything. 
uh, a model of Yonaguni, and I want to compare that to Saxe Huaman in Peru. Um, pretty, pretty similar looking, or at least some similar uh, aspects. And just the, see this, this isn't a quarry, and it's not, um, it's not a bench. It's basically a, it's just cuts, or it's features, it's feature soup or feature salad in a, a very particular way so as to um, not quite not quite add up to anything and uh, a few different angles of it here so similar to Yonaguni and here's here's the coast of Yonaguni and um, this line I'll show you in Google Earth later but uh, this line changing at an angle, possibly just modern work, but and then this thing you don't see it in this picture, but it kind of extends out, almost looks like some kind of path. So uh, I'm trying to point out the uh, the blend between the art and architecture and uh, the earthworks aspect of it, and um, perhaps demonstrate that it's part of the same program. And this this episode. Um, uh, strange patterns. I'm uh, I'm gonna go through all the still images first, and then afterwards. Um, so I'll go through all the images and hit all the uh, talking points and make all the points I want to make, and then uh, after that I'll I'll expound on some of the examples in uh, Google Earth, uh, scrolling around and giving you a tour of some of the areas. Um, I just figured that's a better way to. Um, so you could just watch like the first 25 minutes or so if you want and um, then just maybe skim through the last bit of it um, so you get the the meat most of the meat in the first 20 or so minutes um, okay so here's something that uh, occurred to me recently they and I don't know who they is really have no clue so I don't want to get into that but uh, they continually deface and deform and reconfigure their own works across multiple domains art, architecture, earth's surface, government, and human affairs, etc. This explains the Notre Dame fire recently, the buildup and teardown of World's Fair buildings, multiple cultural layers, and shoddy restoration of ancient sites and ever-shifting landscape. And this process may even be automated, possibly as a way to keep us discombobulated and thus manageable. Or I would say possibly as like a, a prank, whether in good humor or ill humor, or possibly just as a shock test or science experiment, like really with no agenda behind it other than learning. That's possible as well. But um, the idea is... Uh, they keep re like writing and rewriting over their own stuff, like they create some something sensical, and then they gibberishize it, and then they repair it, and then they they do all these kinds of restorations and things to their own works over the the centuries and millennia, possibly. That's this theory, and um, and that keeps us in a a state of not being able to realize what's going on. That's that's the idea. So the recent Notre Dame fire uh, within the last year or so, uh, the Notre Dame Cathedral caught on fire and it was like this big thing in the news. So the, the idea is that this would be one particular, just one example of uh, uh, an event which is kind of planned either planned or happened organically and then was metabolized to be used in this agenda, but probably planned, I would say. And uh, it's just like um, something's always happening. Something always has to be uh, coming to the fore to, uh, to make your, to grab your attention, perhaps. I don't know, maybe. Um, but yeah, I think... Now, as I'm, as I'm kind of working through this, uh, it, it occurs to me that it might be like, part of it might be 
so that we don't have too much downtime to to ourselves and to our own thoughts to process um, our own reality on our own terms and on our own time. So it might just be like a continual, like keep you keep you stimulated, keep you stimulated um, type of thing. Uh, so the the build up and tear down of the world's fair buildings. You've probably seen that, Conspiracy RS, John Levi, and many others covering this stuff. Um, so it's just like an ever, I like to call it a, a never-ending pop-up book of dildos. Um, so it's, it's impressive stuff popping up, and it's a tear down pop-up, tear down, or feature, like, tear down and feature it in another city, or um, shuffle things around. It's, it's a uh, to summarize, it's just a dynamic, um, big um, generator of impressive distractions. Impressive and slightly bewildering, maybe. Um, maybe. I mean, that's just one theory. Um, then we have the Roman sites with like 28 cultural layers and the restoration and uh, like the the Parthenon and I think the Parthenon or whatever the famous thing in Athens is um, That's like always being restored. There's like full-time Machinist sun site and like so we never even really know what it looked like um, Like our, our perception is of, of things is always shifting and uh, It's never really on solid ground um, Yeah, and I mean, there's organic, non-conspiratorial reasons why you might have multiple, multiple cultural layers. But a lot of these Roman sites have so many weird things that... Uh, weird aspects that you have to at least question the cultural layers too. So, I think even the, the various eras of the sites may be, in some sense, planted. Not super confident, confident about that, but um, seems somewhat plausible at least. And one more thing, this process may even be automated. So like, imagine something which monitors Earth at a very comprehensive level. Like on the macro, the micro, like it knows our every thought and emotion. I'm, I'm talking about like a supercomputer like linked into our, our unconscious and our conscious. <laughs> Um, on like some high dimensional level, and then it uh, it just kind of uh, punch, uh, crunches the numbers and then generates something for us to um, generates I don't know the perfect tail or the perfect limbo or uh, demented carnival land or wh whatever whatever its its game is whatever its angle is it. Um, it may even have it, its algorithm so good that the whole thing is just automated. And I doubt, I doubt it's hope, hopeless. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think we're out of luck or anything like that. But, uh, yeah, just uh, a th something that's been on my mind. So, let's, uh, let's continue. Okay, let's start with our uh, Google Earth examples. This is in South Africa. I'll take you on a tour here of this area in a moment, or uh, in a few minutes. But we've got sets of parallel lines. We've got spirals. We've got wigglies, um, dots. Uh, horseshoe trenches is something you see a fair amount of, which I haven't really talked about, but that's another strange pattern. Um, just a general shit show, basically. And... Once again, very briefly, just I have to acknowledge that it's possible that someone just likes to have fun with high technology out in the desert, and it's not w with any particular nefarious agenda behind it, possibly, in some cases. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I don't think that's particularly likely, but um, Bolivia, this massive area, has patterns like, like this. Uh, similar to the Macher in Scotland, but more almost linguistic. 
aspects to these patterns or uh, more shapely, certainly not random. Um, we've got the wavy lines and parallel lines, but we also have, I think if you look close here, it's uh, pretty much perfect five pointed star here. Uh, so just a very many, 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 as you'll see, it's like 20 miles or more uh, per side of a large area. I said that's weird, but like this, a, a very large area. I'll show you later. Um, Bolivia, again, we've got a, a ring of um, square or uh, stone rectangles. Uh, not and not really seeming to serve any purpose, uh, and then many isolated um, uh, squares or rectangles, like a lot of them in this area, just plenty, kind of randomly distributed, and some of them are clustered, some not. So those are strange patterns we have. Another thing uh, nearby is we have these holes with four mounds around them, um, pretty large. Not to mention the parallel lines and the, um, the scraped up looking land. But uh, yeah, these, uh, I don't know whether these are test digs for like oil companies or something, but it's a s similar pattern. These I found out about from um, uh, Ruins of Old Earth, the, the Google Earth tour by, uh, by Gary Shonung, which is a pretty good pretty good video and um, yeah just the strange pattern we observe possibly modern maybe not Bolivia once again uh, looking similar to Jordan these patchy this patchy land and um, the lumpy aspect in the middle or inside these uh, rectangles or polygons I would say um, it might be like they cleared the land and then they dumped the, the material that they cleared into piles um, on the on the site instead of trucking it uh, out somewhere else. I don't know why. This, it looks pretty strange, but very similar to this in Jordan, uh, which I kind of showed you the other day in a previous video, um, patchy land. Uh, but pretty similar, I think. Like these these mounds, these humps, bumps, and the lines and the patchiness. Pretty similar, I would say. More in Jordan. I uh, already showed you this area, the uh, vast area of kind of well, the stone circles, of course, and then the odd. I don't know, they kind of look like meandering antenna or, or uh, just in, in geometry, but it's just a weird, weird pattern of who knows what. Mor Mauritius, uh, it's an island and it's got some strange patterns on the land. This could be a false positive or, or a completely modern thing, but uh, the, the dots or the, the round little lakes here, the mini, mini depressions and lakes um, are kind of have a strange shape to my eye. So I want to, I want to take you th um, through that area. Uh, once again, could be modern. South Africa, uh, the wavy lines and the, um, once again, the mounds or dots or bumps oh, or spots. Uh, the wavy lines could be uh, just conventional terracing or irrigation techniques, um, but I want to compare it to this area in Peru where we have the, the patchy hillside and then a, a different style of waviness, which I would argue is not in use as farmland. It's just kind of uh, I think it's it's probably rock walls, maybe. I don't know. I don't have a close-up photo of it, but got the uh, scalloped-looking or 
kind of uh, the walls which are made of stone and stone and dirt basically and then also the secondary wavy pattern which I'm saying is not probably not conventional agriculture just it doesn't look like somebody's plot it's kind of too big um, could be wrong could just be landscaping modern landscaping Iraq is another area uh, not to, um, not even considering this huge ditch which is also a strange pattern but uh, the vast area of wavy lines which is like I'm arguing maybe uh, worked over land um, and these mounds as well little circular mounds could just be rocks but a little weird looking and um, it's like the whole area was worked over and this massive massive ditch thing as well Ethiopia we've got the possible landscaping and or terracing and then but that has to be considered alongside these strange um, all the strange stone circle formations we see so I'm saying it's just uh, and the patchiness so I'm saying it's just strange patterns kind of like we see in all the architecture stuff Papua I showed you in a previous video um, there is illegal logging and stuff in this area I was reading about it and apparently that's a problem that they deal with whether it's this much that's certainly possible um, pretty large area of odd patterns here's another look at some of the goofy patterns We've got arrays of squares like a checkerboard We've got kind of uh, squiggly and then overgrown patterns which you can't see as well New Jersey uh, got this would be more of like the cartoonish river um, category but um, we've got the silly details added into like for effect almost or like kind of like sneering at us like like look look what we can get away with you know what I mean and then this all these weird little geometries here I don't quite know what to make of that just weird shapes certainly not natural um, so those are strange patterns of course the parallel lines aspect France similar thing um, these patterns right here the lines these goofy patterns maybe even these lakes as well but I'm focusing on these patterns sorry about that <sighs> struggling with my mouse uh, like these uh, scraped up patterns certainly could be just landscaping so some of these again examples again maybe duds but we'll take a look in Google Earth and look at the historical photos see if we can't parse anything out uh, I think these patterns are at least somewhat strange Italy we've got these oval islands and um, this it wouldn't surprise me if this is modern work but I would once again uh, postulate that this may be modern work in the service of this very strange um, agenda we're dealing with which is which may or may not be ongoing I don't think they left at least not yet <laughs> um, but yeah it's something tracing a path around these see a very clear path just kind of um, buzzing off the edges of these islands some kind of dredge maybe or I don't know but we'll take a look at this area Scotland already showed you this the wavy patterns on a pretty massive 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 scale uh, my chair or whatever you want to call it squiggly wavy lines and they're pretty deep grooves like you see uh, well here's more of it uh, yeah uh, you see the the deep the depth of the grooves 
and also these um, these subtle uh, extensions of the grooves. This could be like from when it rains and then water runs, collects in these uh, grooves and then pours out along these paths. So it uh, erodes more of the coast along these areas. Or it could be that these um, grooves here or uh, linear gashes or grooves, these could be extensions of these tool maneuvers. You know what I mean? Like the same thing which did this uh, pattern also did these patterns to the shore. It's possible. It's hard to tell. But um, I did enhance the, the coloring and the contrast and I think the sharpness of this image just to bring out the detail. But the detail is there. I mean, this is very strange stuff. You see the, the size of these mounds, like here's a standard like minivan or something and you see how big and wide and deep these are like these are pretty heavy duty patterns so I don't think this is uh, just conventional um, farming from our predecessors and ancestors but very strange patterns some another photo of it you can see the the size of it uh, let's see is there any, any people we see the size of a car, and then you see the size of these stones. Each one of these is probably a little bit longer than a car. And then you see the width of these grooves and the depth of them. So the all the modern stuff is happening on top of these old patterns, I'm, I'm guessing. Another angle here, and I mean, not even mentioning this stone circle or cairn or whatever they're called. Uh, henge or whatever it's like the it looks like it could be ceremonial or uh, like a compass or like aligned with the stars or something like that and I'm saying that's all like uh, just an, an attention trap a trap for your for our attention it's like it's like the inscription at, at Sacro Bosco that I was saying at the beginning of this episode like wise people don't get too deep into this maybe i don't know in which case i'm a fool <laughs> but there may be some place for for studying it so that we can summarily dismiss it uh possibly and i might even say like sheared over land like flat sheared land sheared across or raised raised over leveled but yeah, the patterns, there they are. That's what they look like. And San Clemente, California, I'll give you another look at this in Google Maps. I'm not super confident on this one. Uh, this is my hometown, but um, uh, this was right before they started developing houses on this or something on these hills. And um, so this could be like just pre preparing the land preparing the land for the housing developments or whatever. That's certainly possible, but it does look similar to the, the stuff in Ireland and Scotland and Peru right here. Uh, just vast areas of squiggly strangeness. Okay, um, this may be, this is almost certainly modern work, but there's a slight chance that it's part of an ongoing um, component of this protocol. So I just wanted to touch on it real quick. Salton Sea in California. Uh, we've got these uh, kind of quasi haphazard wiggles and um, dotted lines and, and little tick marks. Uh, plenty of different patterns in this area. And um, this may be a false positive. Uh, this I know for a fact was done recently because I was looking at the historical photos. Like it, stri it struck me as strange at first, um, but then I saw the uh, photos from not too long ago of this being constructed. I do wonder though, like what it is and why some of these are serrated looking and other ones look like Pac-Man. It's like, uh, and mm, it's as if. 
the modern work was just making more strange patterns. But that, that may not be the case. It could, it could just be my ignorance on whatever this type of uh, development is. Uh, uh, but then there's also the possibility that there is a conventional explanation for this and it's part of the uh, weird weirdness protocol somehow in some strange way. Um, that may be not so likely. Uh, I don't know. Kansas, probably another false positive, but um, just these wavy lines. I just want to be uh, clear that I'm tr at least trying to be discerning here. Uh, I, I would say there's still, I don't know, 15% chance that this stuff is str uh, strange patterns that are part of this terraforming thing and the larger picture as well. But then I was reading this article that um, about these modern uh, terraces that farmers make, and they pretty much make these exact patterns. So uh, I'll, I'll give you a quick look later at the the Midwest of the United States, and we, we can just kind of zoom in and out and try and get a feel for whether we think this is done over older um, cleared land and uh, older work, or whether it's um, mostly modern stuff. Um, I don't know, probably mo modern. Or Brazil, maybe another false positive. The squirrely lines, which is probably just the um, same thing in Cuba. But uh, here it is, I'll, I'll read, you, read you some of it. Uh, Iowa farmers struggle with uh, soil loss and erosion from water running across the field, blah, blah, blah. Uh, losing, loosing the soil might make the field less fertile. Um, so they, they erect these artificial terraces, even if the land is flat already, so that um, water flows in a particular way, which is advantageous to their, their uh, growing crops. Uh, I think these are called, oh, what are they called? tile lines, and they're like these, you can read this if you want, but uh, these, this is when they're under construction, and uh, yeah, these wavy lines here that are uh, deliberately constructed to manage water. So I might be tempted to look at that and say, oh, strange patterns or wavy lines or whatever, you know what I mean? But um, here you see kind of meandering across the screen here, but that's what they look like up close. Uh, terraces are a common practice. Hundreds of miles help cut soil loss. Um, and they need to be maintained each year, blah, blah, blah. Re retain moisture for growing crops. And um, so yeah, the stuff like, like this, in Cuba, where I, I might be tempted to say, oh, wavy patterns or stuff like that. Uh, I just want to acknowledge that um, I'm aware of this stuff. And the, the patterns in uh, Peru may not be um, this type of terracing um, and elsewhere as well. So uh, I think uh, I should... I should say as well that um, some of these patterns may mimic the the modern patterns. Um, hmm. Or we, we may just have both, you know what I mean? There's all kinds of strange arbitrary patterns from this terraforming project. And then obviously we have conventional patterns which resemble that in a sense. So this area, uh, the, uh, Isla de Alegranza in Spain, this is one spot I think these wavy terracing things may not be just simple terracing. Um, number one, because it doesn't look like anyone's growing anything. And uh, see here, although they do look fairly crisp or um, sharp, sharply defined. So I don't think it could be too old. 
but it's still a strange pattern worth considering. And then we also have these um, almost like eyebrow shaped. Uh, it's tough to tell whether it's in, indented into the land or raised above the land. But I think it's walls. Like, uh, and some of them are straight, some of them are angular. So these strange patterns of just like a ridge of raised rock. Here's a closer look at it. And uh, I don't know, they could be retaining walls or something. But here's a, a loopy one. Uh, and I think, yeah, you can see it's shadow. So I think it is some type of wall. It might just be more more patterns like the stone circles in Africa. It's kind of gibberish. Um, okay, Myanmar just briefly mentioned that the the pre-parceling may be a strange pattern we're dealing with. The uh, pre-zoned land uh, that's uh, zoned up before humans are even let loose on it. Maybe England blotchy patchy area. Uh, with the, again, the wavy lines, which are probably not terracing here, but maybe fencing or some type of um, management to prevent landslides or something like that. Could be that. Um, or it could be like these wavy patterns uh, on this island in Spain. That's possible as well. Just kind of uh, embellishment or flare. Um, Certainly possible. And then on the Isle of Man in the UK nearby, uh, we have um, more blotchy patches like that, but uh, you see the slight variations. And I would argue that these patches are meant to look um, like quasi uh, like creatures or like animals. So they're strategically meant to look like they could be multiple things um, like this I don't know this to me looks like it's like 20% lizard and 80% clearing clearing the forest like this thing is a little more ambiguous but uh, this thing looks like a salamander or something and then see these large-scale scrape marks or um, uh, just some kind of working over of the land. Uh, and we see straighter ones as well. Mm, possibly for the road construction, but... Uh, see, this is the kind of gibberish that's on a very subtle level. Um, it, you re it's really, you can't, you can't make sense of this. Because it, it could be many things. Uh, I don't know. And then I bring this up because it kind of dovetails nicely or segues into uh, the Nazca lines in Peru because, well, obviously we have these arranged rocks on the ground which form these very precise, um, um, well, some of it is precise, some of it is quite goofy, but um, these very large scale lines which you've probably seen before. And then we also have these like strange animal figures. So I'm saying like these could be like a similar type strategy or a similar manifestation of the same strategy or slightly different manifestation. We've got these strange patterns like this guy with a very long body and awkward hands. And are these people just tripping on psychedelics when they're making these pictures? Or, and you see the size of it, like these semi-trucks uh, compared to the size of this. Um, I think it's someone just saying like, like, hey, hey dummies, <laughs> like, are you not, are you not paying attention? <laughs> like connect the dots, you know what I mean? Maybe. Uh, I mean, Again, could just be an experiment or a shock test just to see what happens. Um, or, or again, like an automated, you know how um, in uh, discussions about AI safety, they talk about like an AI, an immature 
artificial intelligence, which uh, gets instructions or like misinterprets its instructions and then uh, hauls off and turns the world to paper clips or something like that, or just does some absurd thing. So it could it could just be like this is the vomit of a a bad um, computer algorithm on a very powerful um, supercomputer or AI. Like <laughs> like we gave we gave some AI instructions like go heal Earth or go help the humans, and then it like the under the hood algorithms were wonky, so it <laughs> it misinterpreted. And then just made a bunch of bullshit as possible. Um, so this this array of little I don't know exclamation points or just nothing burgers basically. Uh, these little guys again very abstract, like halfway between abstract and uh, like a first grader's art. Uh, this dick butt thing. This place needs a dick butt with pitchfork feet. Indeed it does. Uh, the monkey with the tail, the spider, this little derpy T-Rex, this hummingbird. Uh, this was the Red Bull fl flight over the Nazca lines. See the massive scale of these psh, strange patterns. And here he's coming in on this patch of lines and the hummingbird. This one in particular is uh, kind of embodies the the spirit or or the uh, the agenda that I'm talking about. See how it's like feature salad or feature soup? Like, the, is this a, a genitalia right here? Almost. Is this a tail or genitalia or a new uh, person? Is this his body? Like, there's a little happy face right there at the ass. <laughs> or is this the ass over here? And this is the penis, or is this the feet, uh, or are these the feet? See what I mean? It's like a very, um, I mean, it looks quite derpy, but when you take a step back, it's a very sophisticated derpiness. That um, uh, it's kind of like a M.C. Escher painting, or mm, a little bit in a, in a sense, but uh, like um, it's. Uh, I guess I said it already, feature soup or feature salad that uh, is meant to achieve either for amusement purposes or is, or is meant to achieve some effect on the human psyche. Again, more spirals. Uh, see spirals in a lot of places. This, oops, like this thing, palm tree maybe or something kind of a plumbus. Here's a, a little map of all these things. Like this thing, it's like a bird with, uh, instead of a head, it's got like a zigzag. Or I guess this is, this is the neck and this is the, the head. But uh, I'm thinking it's like meant to not make sense in a very particular way. Like I drew this shit in like fourth grade. Like didn't you? I don't know. More monkey, more hummingbird. Um, strange pattern. Mm. And you see the, the deep lines in conjunction with it. So, uh, well, first of all, I would just briefly make the point, and I think it's already the consensus view that the animals are done by the same people who did the lines. And then uh, from there, I would say that the same people who did the animals are the same people who did a lot of the strange art we see on both small and large scale. Um, here's a, a strange tree next to the, the dick butt guy. Weird thing. Uh, abstract weirdness. So, I mean, you get the picture. It's like a bird with a zigzag head. So, like, I mean, that, that just screams gibberish to me. Okay, this is the Blythe in Taglios in California, and once again, it's large scale. I mean, this could have been done by the Native Americans or something, certainly, but it's like a dude on the ground. And it could also be modern deception, like, uh, I don't know, some secret group comes in, you know, a decade or two ago, or 
a hundred years ago or something and makes these things for the purpose of some kind of fraud. I mean, there's fraudsters out there. We know that. Uh, uh, but you see the strange derpy patterns, um, kind of like the Nazca lines and Nazca animals. Um, this is in California, so uh, just demonstrating the, the potential scale of all this and the style and the multiple styles. Um, yeah. Okay, and then uh, I'll briefly touch on crop circles because um, these are obviously strange patterns on Earth's surface, so I guess it kind of fits into the theme of the episode. Um, but uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me if these are yet another leg of the, the same program or um, branch of the same program, which does all the, the strange architecture and quar quarries and the Nazca lines and the strange patterns on the surface of the Earth. So this may be more of their work. And you see these kind of look like plumbuses, right? Like this, for sure. Like, what is that? And I certainly spent more than a couple years looking into crop circles. Uh, I haven't done it in, in years. I haven't taken a look at them, really. But um, I think it's like a, a, the person doing it is just laughing their asses off. Just watching us run in circles, trying to figure out what this stuff is when it, it, it's designed to not make sense but to look like it might, like the same same thing I've been saying for a while now. Um, some of these do, like this does have some kind of like ASCII code or something like that, and it does say something, but I would, I would still argue that it's like uh, just, just to mess with people's heads. Same thing with this, like pseudo-linguistic. This thing, like, it's like a... Uh, uh, gibberish, mm, gibberish art, and I want to compare this real quick, this crop circle to this Nazca line, not, not super similar, but in similar enough, you know, it's got the three lines for wings, and the, the long nose, and slightly similar tail, um, but I would say it's similar enough to where it might be like um, an outing themselves kind of thing, like they're they're trying to link their own sites together, or uh, like a catch and throw type thing. That's a pro programming term, um, uh, or or callbacks, like uh, that's a storytelling or a movie screenwriting thing. Uh, a callback is like when you um, when you reference the same thing that you used previously. So it's like it's like they're trying to tell us that they're the ones doing this by doing this. Possibly, just a theory, guys. I don't know. This thing kind of plumbusy and mm, slightly similar to that. Not another Nazca line. Another plumbus, plumbus. Um, I didn't include all of my crop circle images, but um, I think that's all the still images I want to show. So uh, hopefully I made the points I want to make, and then um, now I'll go back and the the Google Earth images that I showed. I'll take you for a, a scroll around those areas. So uh, I'll be back in a second. <laughs> 